Okay. Water's really good. Um, yeah, so. We'll be right back after um, um, these messages. Yeah. Hi, are you tired of writing like crap? Does your handwriting look like chicken scratch that no one can read? With the new and sleek Ultra Maestro's pen, which has the new state-of-the-art writing technology revolutionized to make you write better, you don't have to write like a preschooler anymore. Ultra Maestro's pen, now available everywhere. Well, hi there. Are you like me and have way too much money on your hands? Do you want to buy something but can't decide what? Well, I have the solution for you. Introducing the Mystery Box, the only box on the market which can contain anything from a brand new iPhone to whatever I found in my garage. And it's yours for only three payments of $50. The only thing the box can't contain is your excitement. Mystery Box, because why not? You emotionally unstable? Is adulthood getting you down? Well, why don't you cry about it, you big baby? From the company that brought you adult diapers, Big Baby Tissues is perfect for your crying needs. It's made from a cotton blend entirely constructed to soak up your adult tears. Your parents can't always be there when you cry, but that doesn't mean we won't. It even comes in a travel size so you can cry on the go. When you can't handle adulthood, just cry about it with Big Baby Tissues. Are you tired of the same old hairstyle with the same bland hair accessory? Are you tired of seeing cute headbands or bows and then crying when you see the price? Well, look no further. Hi, I'm Patrick Barney, and I'm here to introduce you to Classy Bands. From flower crowns to headbands, Classy Bands are stylish hair accessories straight off the runway, but without the runway price. Whether it's a sit down with friends or a date night, Classy Bands are perfect for any occasion. Buy Classy Bands. Yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. Thank you. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. So speaking of water, um, here's our Travis Rush with the with water. So we water. I like water. That's why I asked for water. Oh, drink the whole thing. Drink water. Water, 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 water. Pants on fire, right? Hmm? This afternoon, Lead into it. we're at the Moore Park Mystery no, Town, where many gather in splendor fine, of this radically behaved oasis. Students and professors alike have speculated the extensively researched patterns of the fountain's activity, but find little resolve in their studies. I have extensively researched the patterns of the fountain activity and found nothing. Today, we are not only grateful to see the fountain in action, but also the hopeful faces of its loyal onlookers. This is my first semester, and so this is like one of my only times. It's great. The fountain's history of activity at Moorpark College has caused the student atmosphere to maintain a sense of discomfort, worrying this water attraction may mean spectacle or disaster. This fountain right here is a travesty. A travesty. It is just the government. Yes, the government. They're using us to make us go, oh, goo goo gaga, because we, they're forgetting about us. They want us to pay all the miseries, because geographical miracle, more like economical disaster to make us forget about Uganda. And you're part of the problem. You're working for them. You're reporting these lies and fallacies. <laughs> you, government. <laughs> 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 The fountain has not only gathered a great amount of attention, but has proven to be a vessel of hope, showing onlookers that geographical milestones are possible and will happen in their lifetime. This is Travis Rush, and thank you for joining us. That was, uh, that was very interesting, Travis. Thank you, Travis, for that report. I really hope your neck is all right, because it can be a scary world out there. May God be with you. Beautiful song. Anywho, we got a special documentary to show you guys. It's really um, like relevant because it's about students like us, me, you. So, you know, here it is. Growing up, we're always told to go to college. 
We build our knowledge of universities through parents, older siblings, sports, and reputations. By the time you're in high school, you begin to have your own opinion on colleges, and some may even have an idea of where they want to go. The reasons for this obviously tend to vary. What they don't prepare some of us for is applications, financial aid, scholarships, housing, picking your major, sticking to it, homesickness, and, you know, the getting in part. But some of us don't get that far. What about community college? Have I ever been told to go there? Is that a legitimate option, or just a lazy thing to do? I wondered if others felt like this. And when the time comes to transfer, have they come to appreciate it as much as me? In high school, community college had a serious negative connotation. I just kind of saw it as a sort of like, middle ground of education. Everyone's parents says to them like, oh well community college is that place where like fuck ups go uh, if they don't get into a real school. If you go there you're gonna stay there forever. <laughs> it kind of seems like high school just extended. People are settling for something. It's just an extension of high school and you weren't gonna really get anywhere with a community college. When I was in high school there was this belief that going to community college was a poor choice. Kind of a lazy thing to do. You were expected to know what you wanted and you were supposed to go to university right after high school. And for me, that wasn't really possible. I had a hard time figuring out what I wanted to do in high school. I didn't know like who I was or what I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I liked to draw and paint, but I never thought I was good enough to go to art school, but I like dreamed of going to an art school. I could tell I still like dreamed that I was going to go. That was the next step. The university was the next step right after high school. I wanted to go to USC. Calais, definitely. Arts and Arts and Arts. Academy of Art University in San Francisco. I, I didn't even know that much about it. I just knew it was a film school. The idea of going to like a private school with a name like U of C or Cal Arts or NYU or any of these schools was just like so over my head. I wasn't eligible to get into any. Um, UCs or Cal State. You go to talk to a guidance counselor or whatever in high school, but they only tell you the five sentences that they've prepared for every other student. I feel like it's super generic. They give you booklets and pamphlets as to like what schools that they tell you to go online and then and hit apply now, but they don't tell you what comes after it. Apply now. The idea of what I wanted to do with my life kind of like fizzled out. I kind of was like lacking confidence in where I was at. The fact that I wasn't at university didn't feel good and the fact that I was still like 10 minutes from where I grew up didn't feel good either. I felt like it was like purgatory. Just kind of felt like I wasn't going anywhere. That was the weird part for me was knowing that uh, I'm about to transfer and all of my friends are already gone. Well for starters it saved me a lot of money. I think it's a, a really your learning environment helped me like appreciate the value of education which I didn't really have when I started community college. I think the, the pros of community college really outweighed the cons because I came out knowing what I wanted to do. I think that had I gone to a university afterwards I wouldn't have really had that great period to figure out like what do you want to do? School is something I struggled with my whole life. It's been like my biggest obstacle I, I guess. So finding those classes that I enjoyed was a big like comfort that it wasn't because I was stupid, it was just something that I just had to find. Oh, uh, wow, that was um, super interesting. <laughs> Kept me interested during the whole theme. Very time. So, you know, speaking of Nima over there. Hi, Nima. You have a guest. Go. Guest it up. Which guest? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's. About me. Which camera? I, uh, which camera? Oh. Hello. Hi. I was saying hello to the audience, not you. All right. Hello, Carrie. Hello, Nima. That's your name, right? Yeah. Is that yours? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, why don't you tell me about yourself? Okay. Uh, well, I am 20 years old. I grew up uh, in the area, in Ventura County. I actually lived right. just down the road till I was two years old. Uh, then we moved. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Uh, no we way. moved to Oak Park, 
and been living there ever since. It's been a it's been a whirlwind of wow. living there. Did you know this was someone's god and I'm using it as a footrest? Kind of disrespectful, actually. Yeah, I'm sorry. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going? Oh. Okay. Um, yeah. A uh, big family. And my dad is a fireman and my mom is an artist. Um, it says you're a child, uh, one out of 15? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 15 kids. Uh, all the same parents. I was a middle child. There's eight girls, seven boys. Um, you know, it's, it's fun. I would never do it, obviously, but... Um, it's just like, are we taking a break? What? We're still. No, keep going. Keep talking? Yeah. Okay. Okay, sorry. I was asking Checking you something important. Oh, okay. Mind your own business. Okay, sorry. I'll just talk. Um, so, big families. Um, How interesting. Yeah, I was homeschooled all of elementary school. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. Until um, sixth grade was my first day of school. So, that was, as you can imagine, pretty intense. Um, no, I I wouldn't. Oh, it was. I can't so imagine that. You can't? It's like anything that you saw on TV, like for school, like was all you knew. <sighs> so like you go to school for say sixth grade and you're like, what's nutrition? All I know is recess. Uh, well, are we taking a break now? No, just keep going. Okay, sorry. Um, making my work that much harder. I mean, ask me, ask me a question and, and I'm sure I could give you a good answer. No, you, you can't. Actually, you wouldn't be okay. able to. Uh, I guess I got to spice things up because okay. this is quite boring. Okay. Um, how about a game? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Staring contest. Okay. All right. When I say ready and go, you, you get go. ready and then you go. Okay. So ready, go. Okay. Well, I can't see your eyes. Stop moving. You're making. A <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you can't that's see not, your you're eyes. You're not that's playing by the easy. rules. Can't Stop moving. But All right, go. Okay, but I can see one eye. It's you have a, you have an unfair advantage because you have sunglasses on. Nope. So like I don't know. Stop distracting me. Oh. Yeah. What the? F These are what? too clear. They're not gonna. Get, get it. He's still gonna be able to see me. It doesn't matter. No, they're like they're like gold and yellow. I don't even no know why you have those. There's no advantage. It's all a myth. But she's complaining about sunglasses, so I'm giving. Sunglasses. <sighs> you know what? I'll make it work. Okay. I can see the white of one eyeball. Is the eye blue around? Look Stop lying. I'm, I'm the host. The audience believes me. You blinked twice when you said that. <laughs> Who won? Well, I did. But Who's I, the judge? For some reason, Who's I the kept judge? playing. Lord um, only knows. One minute, guys. Okay. One minute. Yeah. Hold on. Who paid for this? Um, well, I, I don't have any ideas. Because, do you know like the producer of this show? Because yeah. I can't imagine you getting here. Yeah, I mean, but you wrap it up and then... No, I, I gotta get to the bottom of this. Well, yeah, we're... I'm just doing some good old investigative journalism right here. 